are listening to The J-Boy Show, your number one source for Auburn and the SEC. My goal was to run through his soul and grab his heart when I, when I run through his soul. Through his soul. Kurt, Nate, Coach Dad. Those are memories. memories. I think we've established ourselves as, I think, the premier conference in college football. College football. Now, the SEC is, is, is better at the top. It's better in the middle. It's- the Southeastern Conference remains the premier conference. Yeah. and everybody else trying to catch it. I think this is probably the best league from a competitive venue standpoint. They have the most capable team. You just look at those programs, the way they recruit, how they invest. Snap to Burrow. Three steps. Fires. Back corner of the end zone. Over the shoulder. Catch. Did he hold on? He did. Justin Jefferson. Touchdown. Now, your host, J-Boy. Hey guys, appreciate you joining us. Before we get to the Nuts and Bolts interview with Ray, I want to preview one of his songs from his new EP, Nowhere Near Done. This is Wander. I can't help but wander Back when everybody and welcome to this special Friday edition of the J Boy Show. We have our first entertainer on the show and he's a guy has got a brand new EP out, uh, Nowhere Near Done. Uh, I guarantee I've listened to the whole thing um, and I'm a very hard grader of country music actually and, and that's Ray Scott. Ray, what is up man? Thanks for uh, taking some time and in between the tunes. Hey dude, I appreciate you having me man. Like I, thought, like I tell my mom, you know. De- yeah, definitely, and and again, if it's it's something where uh, where shoot we we have that relationship, we're going to be in good shape for the rest of the interview. But uh, but man, you've got a lot of exciting stuff going on right now. Like I said, you know, you got that new EP out, uh, nowhere near done, and and you've had you know top forty hits before. I mean, I mean, big singles. I know our audience knows who you are. Can you just kind of talk about your your transformation, just kind of as an artist, just kind of where you were and and where you're at now with this new EP, and and what it means to you to get it out there to your fans. Well, you know, man, I got the the big record deal years ago, and you know, I signed to Warner Brothers Music back in the mid two thousands, and uh, had a big hit with them uh, called My Kind of Music. I've mm-hmm. had some uh, hits, uh, and some cuts recorded by other artists as well. Had a few hits in in Europe, you know. So I've I've done well with that. But you know, um, you know, I left the big label system after kind of having some differences in uh, creative opinions and whatnot. Uh, you know, politics play a big role when it comes to record label deals, and either you're the either you're the uh, you know the the shiny boy or, or you're not. You know, so um, you know once I got out of the big label system, I kind of just decided to do it on my own terms, and, and I've sort of had my own label ever since. And and I'm on my eighth project right now, uh, as far as things that have been released. I'm I'm about to start on number nine, and you know it's just been a nice uh, it's been a nice kind of you know, I've been a little bit under the radar for a while, you know, but uh, I've been doing it exactly the way I want to do it. And when you're independent, uh, you kind of go through different doors and windows. You don't have all the same, uh, you know, uh, promotional tools and everything offered to you that, that the majors do. But you just kind of have to get creative with it and just keep on believing and doing what you do. Definitely. And, and, and is music something, you know, I know you're from North Carolina and, and, you know, me and you were talking a little Clemson football before the show. I, I know uh, I know you root for the Tigers and, and, and keep abreast of what they're doing. But, you know, growing up, is, is music just something you always did since you were a little kid or is it something that you kind of kind of walked into kind of more as a young adult? You know, man, it's something we always did in the family. You know, it's something you know, my, my dad was a singer, kind of a local regional singer. And, and uh, you know, from the time, as far back as I can remember, we were listening to him and some other guys singing around, you know, the house and whatever else. And so you know, between that and, and singing in church as a young kid, uh, I kind of had it in me from an early, early uh, stage in life. And so I was kind of cursed to uh, 
to, uh, to to probably want to do it for a living when I got older. And, and uh, so, yeah, it, it was with me for as far back as I can remember. Yeah, and, and, and it's something, again, where, you know, like you said, you're working on your eighth project and, and you know you know how the music game works and, and, and your identity as an artist. If there's something, you know, obviously your fans know, but if there's anybody out there, and I know there's a bunch that are going to go listen uh, to that new uh, EP, Nowhere Near Done, when, when we get done with this interview, but what, what do you want them to know? What is What are you trying to convey, really, through your music, Ray? I mean, is it is it something where uh, it's just kind of telling a story or is, there, is it kind of specific for each song? Yeah, it's kind of telling a story, you know, but each song is different, you know. Um, everything kind of comes from me, and it's not all my own life experience, but it might be something I experienced secondhand, or, you know, it might have just been something I thought of that was wacky at the last minute, you know, I mean, you never know, but, but it's all part of my own existence, and, and uh, you know, what I try to do is just be honest in my writing, I say things like I think them, um, you know, I try not to let there be any real, um, you know, uh, any wall between that and, and uh, so I think you know when people listen to me I think they you know, they're going to hear exactly who I am they're going to hear something original something authentic and something just a little bit left to center from what they're used to so, yeah uh, yeah and again it's 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 really cool I think the way you've you've arranged the songs on this on this new album and and it, it does kind of tell a story but each song does have its own kind of unique kind of performance if you could say but but talking about football again because I know you're a Clemson fan I know you know what's going on in the college football world I mean is it something to where you'll uh you'll be the one throwing the party on Saturdays for the games or are you kind of sitting in the corner you know strumming the guitar waiting for the big plays to happen well, you know what, dude, I mean, the funny thing is, is one of the reasons that I haven't been anything outside of a casual fan is because on weekends, I'm usually on the road. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, you know, so I, so I do keep up with it, man. I mean, a lot of what I do is watch what they're talking about on Sports Center. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> but, you know, when I, well, sometimes during the season, if I'm playing at a place, you know, I mean, we'll watch enough, you know, as much of the games as we can, that kind of thing. But, you know, I, I'm really not afforded the ability to uh, to kind of mm-hmm. get together and have the big football parties on Saturdays. Every now and again, I might be able to go to one. Yeah. But that's, that's about as as, uh, as extensive as it gets for me. But, you know, I do. I'm, I'm a fan of it, man. I love to see what's happening with everybody. I love the drama, you know, um, the competitiveness, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I I was really, you know, to be honest with you, this year, man, I mean, even though I, I do kind of casually pull for Clemson, I'm a Tar Heels guy. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I grew up more on basketball, coming mm-hmm. from where I come from, between them and Duke and NC State, Wake Forest, those guys like that, and the ACC. But, you know, uh, so football, you know, for whatever reason, as a kid, you know, Clemson was always pretty good when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, for whatever reason, I paid more attention to what they were doing on the football field. But this year, uh, you know, I was just so intrigued by what Joe Burrow was doing mm-hmm. down at LSU. I, I was really kind of following him, and I'm interested to see what, kind of what he does in the pros. And, you know, so I I kind of just get interested in individual stories sometimes, uh, more so than, than what a team's doing. I mean, honestly, you know, I'm a big fan of Nick Saban. I mean, the guy's a master, but sometimes it's like, yeah, yeah, I've heard enough about Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to see what somebody else is yeah, doing. Yeah, I want a different flavor. You find yourself kind of find yourself kind of pulling for whoever's playing Alabama. You know. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, that's that's. Well, know, you know, growing up at all, the Alabama fans, you guys are too used to winning. Though. <laughs> yeah, right that I mean, look, look, women lie, men lie, numbers don't lie, and, and that's true. They've they've definitely had their fair share of winning. But but kind of back to the music side of it, Ray. You know, what what kind of inspired you on this EP? Was it was it something kind of a little bit different? Is this one maybe a little bit different than what you did, or, or is it was there a moment, or was it just kind of a collection of things that that you decided? man, I, I want to put this all together in a collection and, and put it all in one place. Well, you know, man, this one is a little bit different. This this EP, I think, uh, as a collection for me, is a little bit more introspective uh, than a lot of what I've done before. You know, I'm people who do know me and are familiar with me, if, 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 depending on how deep within my catalog you are, you know, a lot of folks know me for writing some kind of, you know, fun, sort of goofy songs, and, and, uh, and I do that. I enjoy doing that, but there's a there's a major serious side uh, going on too. This this EP is probably the first project that I've released that didn't have at least one sort of funny song on it. Yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. I, I uh, you know I write in a lot of different uh, forms, um, a lot of different ways, and, and it just depends on what falls when. 
you know, I like to try to, to tell a story based on kind of a time period in my life, uh, sometimes if I can. And it's, uh, you know, this is one of those, you know, I've, I've been through some stuff. And, you know, get, getting older, you kind of, you know, you take a look at yourself, take stock in what's going on in your life. And, you know, uh, a lot of different things with this one, you know. Um, it was also one that I co-produced myself. Yeah officially for the first time and so you know um there was a lot to it um you know i, I always shift gears there's always something new to say or you know so this next one i think we're going to go ahead and record a full album uh, next go around and, and it's going to be different too so i, I think as as long as you've got something new to say something you're still excited about talking about with people and uh, some kind of message or even if it's not a message even if you just want to tell another joke or two yeah as long as you got something good that you you know, that you think you want to, uh, you know, let people hear. And, uh, you know, that's how we stay excited about what we do. Definitely. And, and again, I know you've, you've got a lot of exciting stuff going on and, and coming down the pipe. And, and I do, I want to kind of talk about your process for a second, Ray. I mean, is it something to where, you know, when you're going to write, like, you know, do all the windows have to be closed? Like the light has to be, because me, when I'm doing the podcast, I, I have to have the same thing to drink. I, obviously everything has to be working. I kind of approach it all the same way. And, and my process is I really don't write down questions. You know, I have uh, some bullet points that I'll look at every now and then, but I kind of just do it straight, straight from, straight from the mind to the people. Is that something, uh, is that a similarity in your process or kind of how do you go about it? You know, man, it's, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I don't have a certain process really. Uh, you know, there's not a certain chair I sit in. I don't have the lights dimmed to a certain area. I'm not necessarily <laughs> drinking. You know, a lot of times I might be drinking coffee. Yeah, yeah, in the I'm morning, But you know, I, I wait for inspiration to hit me. Uh, so I don't, I don't necessarily practice. Um, you know, a schedule of waking up and and sitting at my desk at nine o'clock and seeing what comes out. I mean, if, if I've got an idea, man, I might be soaking in Epsom salt in the tub <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. You know. Uh, and I'll think of something crazy and I'll put, you know, I'll put it down in my phone memos and, and that kind of thing. And, and then as soon as I'm out, I'll, I'll get to it then. Or it might be something that, that just hits my mind when I go to bed or something. So I have to get up. Sometimes I'll stay up till two in the morning messing with it. You know, um, every now and again, I do live outside of Nashville and I, you know, I have been uh, a part of the whole Nashville songwriting system uh, at one point, although I'm not very much a part of it anymore through my own choice but you know they they do the co-writing thing where everybody kind of gets to the office at 10 o'clock and maybe stays till three or four and and uh you know every now and then i'll go downtown and i'll i'll have a co-write with somebody but that's not something uh, process wise that really yeah. jives with me uh very often i mean sometimes it works depending on who i'm with but you know a lot of my writing is by myself and uh because of that i have the freedom to kind of let it happen where, when and where it wants to yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing that with us. And again, everybody's different, and has their own kind of way. And and like you said, that when the inspiration comes is, is when you put it down. But is there one, and I know this may be a weird question, Ray. I don't know if you've gotten this one before, but uh, on the EP, is, and, and I know you love all the songs. They're all really good. But is there one you're like, oh, God, it's my favorite. Like it's uh, like when you get done, even though you're the one writing, you did, you co-produced and all that that you listen to, you're like, God, that one's my favorite. God, you know, man, I mean, it's, I do have those feelings sometimes, but sometimes it changes. Yeah, you know, depending that's on what the I, that's day, what I You know, uh, whatever, whatever hits me the hardest. You know, I mean, like the title track for one was kind of a sentimental thing just because it's sort of pouring my heart out about, you know, hey, you know, against all odds, we're still out there kicking butt kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but uh, there's there's different songs on there for different reasons. I mean, Wander is, is one that... Uh, that is, it's just it's a fun song to play. Uh, you know, I do a live stream every Friday night, by the way, if anybody's interested. Oh, nice. Definitely. That we'll we'll on, definitely uh, get that plug in. On uh, the official Ray Scott page on Facebook, we do it at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time now. And I always play that song. There's a lot of songs we do. But Wander is one that we really love playing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, but depending on what day it is, man, uh, you know, Better As I Go is another one that uh, yeah. it's just sort of talking about, you know, just kind of improving yourself, recognizing where you are in life and hoping that tomorrow you'll be better than you were yesterday. That's, uh, you know, that's something that was, um, you know, heavy on my heart when I wrote it, uh, especially, you know, uh, considering the fact my wife and I had been through some stuff. And, 
yeah. you know, so that one's a you know sentimental favorite as well. But it's as far as like you say, I mean, I don't record any song I don't love for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, a lot of these songs hit other people. Uh, some songs hit other people harder than, than others do, and, and that's that's what I write them. I put them out there and let you know let everybody else kind of sort them out. You know. Uh, Definitely, yeah, and it's all just my stream of consciousness. So. Yeah, and and definitely, obviously, you know that's that's the cool thing and the beauty of music is that it hits people different at different times and in different moods. And and you know, being able, Ray, that that's something that you know, being a, a an artist, a creator, somebody that's had the success that you had that and you continue to have, and you've obviously there's been so many people that, that listen to your music and enjoy your music. You know, do you ever kind of sit back and realize, like, man, that, that I've really affected a lot of lives and and in a positive way. You know, man, it's not something that I, I sit back and think about necessarily. I, I wish that I had the ability to do that more often because, uh, you know, it would make some of these days a little easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, um, it, it's funny. Though. I will tell you this. Every now and again, when I start feeling uh, like, uh, you know, depressed or if I'm having a bad day or whatever, if you feel like you know I'm struggling a little too much, I mean, hey, you know, being an independent artist is tough, no matter how much success you might have had because once you have one song do well then hey you know it's like uh waylon jennings said one time man he said you're only as good as your next hit hoss yeah. you know and and that's that's the truth you know so you got to kind of keep it coming and you know being uh being uh, an insecure artist type person you sit there and think well gosh am i gonna have you know am i gonna have another song that people like is it or is this it uh, so um, you know, but it never fails. Every time I get in, in that state of mind, man, I, I generally get a message from somebody telling me about how this song changed their life mm -hmm. or this one helps is helping out during a hard time or whatever. And it kind of reminds me that, that, you know, we do what we do for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and to have worked so hard at it and done it for so long, I feel like I've at least been able to sort of hone in on something. You know, if I get a good idea that's, uh, and truly inspired, and, and I feel like it transcends sometimes. And, you know, you can write a lot of songs that may be technically good, but they might not touch people, you know. Yeah. Um, and, some, and sometimes when you do do that, and you, you hear that feedback from people, and you realize how important that was for them, and that's, that's a humbling and, and a very, you know, gratifying experience at the same time. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, that's that's what keeps guys like me going, man, you know, because um, it ain't about the money. If it was about the money, I'd be, you know, I'd be curing cancer or, or doing something yeah. like that, trying to. But, uh, you know, I tell people, you know, um, you know, I'm not laughing all the way at the bank, but I'm not crying all the way to work. Either. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, that's a great way to put it. Like, I may I may use that. Yeah. Mind. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's the way I look at things. I feel uh, I feel pretty blessed and lucky to be in the position I am and to have people that you know, to care about what I'm doing, you know, and that's, that's the most we can ask for. Definitely. And, and again, it's something that's, that ends up being bigger than yourself sometimes without you even knowing it. But as we kind of uh, yeah. wind down here, Ray, uh, last question, and then I want to let everybody know where they can, they can find the new EP, uh, nowhere near done. Um, uh, travel obviously you, you talk about being on the road and that's something like i said i coach for nine years so yeah. i feel you man you're always on the road uh and i'm not calling you old not trying to age you but as a guy that's done it for a while is it something you still love doing getting out there and, and traveling and, and moving around and, and living the life dude you know i'll be honest with you i do i love it man. i love staying in hotels you know i love uh you know, a lot of times I'll I'll, uh, I'll use the van. We'll drive during the day. I do a lot of acoustic shows too. You know, and uh, and so we'll drive instead of sleeping on a bus overnight. I'll keep my overhead low and drive a van somewhere and yeah. and uh, you know stay at stay at a hotel. And uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. Man. I I love uh, being one on one with the people. Um, you know, that's that's the thing that drew me to it in the first place. It's kind of what got me hooked on it many years ago. And. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's part of what we do, you know. Um, I love writing a song. Um, I love recording. I love being in the studio. But, man, the biggest buzz is when you get out there in front of them. And yeah. I think, um, you know, anytime you start getting sick of that, then, then maybe you want to take a step back. But, you know, uh, being a little older, uh, than, you know, I'm not in my 30s anymore, 40s, you know, uh, it really doesn't change. You know, I mean, uh, I don't feel... I don't feel older. My knees hurt sometimes, you know, but outside of that, man, I'm I'm still trying to, to trying to run with the crazies. You know, it might hurt like hell the next day, but it's a lot of fun. 
Definitely, man. And, and and I appreciate you sharing that. And and again, man, you make great music. I love it. Uh, please tell everybody in our audience, I know they will, uh, where they can find your, your new EP, uh, where they can find you on social media, because you're a great follow and uh, a guy yeah. that, that makes really good music. Well, thank you, man. You know, my uh, anytime you want to find my EP, you can always go to Amazon. You can go to Amazon. You can go to iTunes, Apple, all that stuff. Um, you know, I've got a, a bunch of them out there. Uh, well, I guess seven or eight now. And, uh, you know, you go to my website. If people like CDs, you can still order a, a physical CD. There's T-shirts. Uh, website is rayscott.com. Um, I am uh, Ray Scott Music on Instagram. I have fun with that. And uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Ray Scott on Facebook. The official Ray Scott page is my band page. And like I was saying, I do the live stream right now on Friday nights because the COVID thing has kept yeah. us at home. So it's been a, it's been a good thing. And, um, you know, uh, I've also got uh, at Reality Check on Twitter, although we don't do Twitter a whole lot. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Twitter's like the redheaded stepkid these days, I guess. Yeah, but, definitely. It's uh, uh, it's something I, uh, you know, I'm, I have to stay on it because I have to stay on it. I'm, I'm figuring it figuring it out slowly. I'm kind of in that age gap to where Twitter was like the thing, you know, coming out of high school, kind of getting into college. But uh, but Ray, really appreciate uh, really appreciate you, man. Everybody, go to RayScott.com. Uh, make sure you go. Get a copy of it, man. It's great music. It's great to, whether you're at the lake, whether you're driving, whether you're having problems or whether you're in a good mood, you can find something you like. And, and Ray, I really appreciate you coming on. And, and we got to get you back on, man. I uh, shoot, I may, may get you to play something next time if you're down. Heck yeah, buddy. You just <laughs> let me know, brother. I'll be down there. All right, man. We'll uh, be good up there in Nashville, and we'll talk soon. All right, bud. All Have right. a good one. You too. That was country music sensation Ray Scott. Really appreciate him joining us. You know, it's kind of outside of our normal realm of the guests. It's cool to be able to talk uh, to somebody in the entertainment industry that's had success. Uh, again, I'm not telling you I like that music because uh, I just have to say it, but I really do. I listened to it uh, actually last week. It, it's really good. It's it, nice and relaxing. Um, and like I said, it's uh, whatever mood you're in, you can find something you like. And Ray's a really good dude, and he's doing it for all the right reasons. So uh, remember, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at The J Boy Show on YouTube. Check our page, thejboyshow.com. That's right, thejboyshow.com. T H E J B O Y S H O W.com. Make sure you check us out. We got all our episodes. We're going to have giveaways on there. We have merchandise. Uh, again, like I said, we're growing super fast. We'd love for you guys to blow the website up. And uh, we're really excited about having it and really excited about keeping this thing going. So uh, remember, it's another special edition. Thank you, Faison. Thank you, Investor Brand Network. J-Boy's going, going, going. Gone.